The question on this one asks us to perform the indicated operation. The question is 5 over 4n squared minus 40n plus 96. Subtract from that 3 over 3n squared minus 18n. The first thing we want to do here is factor. So we're going to go ahead and keep 5 in the numerator. If we factor out a 4 from the denominator, that leaves us with n squared minus 10n plus 24. Our numerator on our second fraction stays the same at 3, and it looks like we can factor out a 3 from our denominator. So if we do that, we get, excuse me, we can factor out a 3n from our denominator, and if we do that, we get n minus 6. The next thing we want to do, it looks like we need to factor our first denominator one more time. So let's keep our numerator at 5. Our denominator then becomes 4 times n minus 4 and n minus 6. And our second fraction stays the same with 3 over 3n times n minus 6. Okay, so we now get to establish, we have the opportunity now to establish a common denominator. The way we do that is we look across and see what we have as commonalities and also what we have that we just need to establish. So we can take, of course our 5 that's in our numerator continues to stay. We want to take our 4 and our 3n and multiply those two guys together. We have an n minus 4, so that stays. And then we have a common term of n minus 6, so that stays as well. I'm going to subtract from that. And our denominator stays the same in both now. We have a common denominator. Numerator in the second fraction is still 3. Next thing we want to do is ask ourselves, what did we have to multiply our denominator by in order to get it to be the common denominator? In, in the first case, we multiplied it by 3n. And because we know that whatever we do to the denominator, we always have to do to the numerator. We are going to take the numerator, that 5, and multiply that by 3n. Same question for our second fraction. What did we have to multiply our denominator by to get that common denominator? The answer this time was 4 times n minus 4. So now we've multiplied each denominator and each numerator by the exact same term. Let's go ahead and do some math. We can now combine our common denominator so we can have one denominator. Our new numerator can be 15n I'm going to go ahead and use this subtraction here. 3 times 4 is 12. And then we have our n minus 4. And here we are. It's now time to do some more math. Once again, denominator stays the same. That's common. We've established that. This time we want to do some distribution in our numerator. So we have 15n, negative 12 times n is negative 12n, and negative 12 times negative 4 is a positive 48. Now it's time to combine like terms. Q 
keeping that denominator as it is. 15n minus 12n is 3n and 48. Okay, so now that we look at this, we see that our numerator has something that we could factor out. And that is a 3. So if we factor a 3 out of our numerator, we get n plus 16. Our denominator, once again, stays the same. And we're left with one more step. And that is that we can see if there's anything that we can reduce. In this case, we can. The 3 becomes a 1, which means the 12 becomes a 4. And we're now ready to write our final answer, which is n plus 16. That's going to be over 4n times n minus 4 and n minus 6. And that is the final answer.